Formula One is the pinnacle of motorsport, the fastest laboratory on earth. If you want to be a winning team, there is no margin of error or complacency. Every team member, every component needs to deliver peak performance at all times. We are working with some of the world's best designers, engineers, always pushing the boundaries. Is there a way to do this better, faster, smarter, to push the boundaries of the possible? Bringing TeamViewer to our partner portfolio is giving us a competitive edge. TeamViewer enabled us to keep innovating when navigating remote working during the pandemic, and it allows us to augment the small trackside crew that travels the world with the full force of the team back in the UK, remotely. I'm excited about the future ahead, working together with TeamViewer to explore how their cutting-edge augmented reality and IoT can support our operations to stay at the forefront of innovation both on and off the racetrack. With the latter supporting on our sustainability ambition, the countdown to zero. Together with TeamViewer, we are committed to playing our role in creating a world that works better. Good morning, everybody, and good morning, Toto and Oliver. Well, let's start by having a little look at the F1 season that we're currently enjoying. Toto, 20 races in. We've just got back from Mexico. Two more races to go. How would you describe the season you are having? So first of all, uh, hi, everybody. I'm glad that uh, you responded positively when we, heard whether, when we asked whether you're Formula One fans. <laughs> it could have been booze also. Um, <laughs> So the season has been difficult for us. We won the championship eight times in a row. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but that's the past. Um, and I think you need, to, you need to look at tomorrow. And uh, we're going to talk about tomorrow with Oliver. But as a matter of fact, we had a difficult season. We just got the physics wrong. There is no mystics in Formula One. Uh, and we got the concept of the car not in the right place. And in Formula One, it takes a long time to unwind um, things that you built into the car. So in that respect, this season is a learning process now. We hope that we can very much challenge the Red Bulls and the Ferraris, uh, but it's all sales are set for next year. Well, I think everybody's excited for 2023. Oliver, you've been now in Formula One, partnered with Mercedes-AMG Petronas for a year. You've had a chance to get under the skin of the sport. What do you make of it? I think we are uh, incredibly happy with the partnership uh, in general. I think it's a fascinating place to apply technology. And there's so much change in the season. As Toto mentioned, uh, there's new drivers in the team, there's new technology, a new layout in the team, and you really see emotion, growth, personal growth, and technology at work at the same time. So it's really cool to see how much is happening, how many engineering hours go into this, how fast you have to be, and that's where we want to be. So innovation at its core, and that's what fascinates us. It really is a fascinating sport, both on and off track. So let's talk about the partnership you have together. It's now been a year, announced officially in 2021. But Toto, the team was using TeamViewer solutions before that, like many other companies. Of course, during the pandemic, we all had to switch how we worked. A lot of people working from home and remotely. And as we're coming out of the pandemic, I think those habits have, have stuck around. But when you look at Formula One, I suppose it looks almost impossible to continue that method because I would think you need to be by the car or in the factory. So how have you applied that new way of working and how has Team Viewer helped you with that? So we operate uh, very much on the field, like we call it. Uh, we're racing 23 times um, around the world, around the globe, and our core team is just 90 people, 90 engineers. And back at the factory, we have 2,000. So we have 1,000 the, on the chassis side and 1,000 on the engine. And as you can imagine, operating in the field, how we, we call it, surgery in the field, is not always trivial, because if you open up an engine or, or a, 
a complicated cooling system, you want to have the resource from back at home. And TeamViewer is the only technology that allows us today um, in having the, the guy back at home um, look through the same boroscope into the cylinder head um, than, uh, than, the, than the mechanic on the field. And that's why uh, we have a, just a much more vast resource available um, that we would otherwise not have because we simply are, we are limited with the maximum of engineers and mechanics that we can take to the races. That's, a, that's the rule. Exactly, and it's helping you work sort of around those rules uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. You can't say around those rules. <laughs> sort of <laughs> on the <Okay>. rules. <laughs> we know what happens when you break the rules. Oliver, let's talk about um, the laboratory that is Formula One. Toto's alluded to sort of almost open heart surgery going on in the paddock uh, each weekend, but we're always constantly developing and innovating in Formula One, and I'm sure you are working on things together. Can you tell us a little bit about some of the developments and solutions that you're working together on? Yeah, so one fundamental concept is that we really try to have the mindset of remote first, as, as Toto was describing it. And when you talk about laboratory and when you think about what you have there, you have all kinds of equipment, you have all kinds of devices. And I think everybody knows TeamViewer for this fundamental idea of we connect to a computer and then we help somebody who has a computer problem. And that's all there and that's very, very successful. But we've already, years back, we've, we've taken that idea of, okay, whatever has an operating system should be connected remotely or it should be possible to, remote, to connect remotely. So you have robots, laboratory equipment, you have supercomputers, you have people also uh, that can be connected with augmented reality. And we really try to go through a system like we have in Formula One, like a team, see the different parts and see what can we do differently if we connect in real time in addition to what we do maybe on track site or in the back office. And that's what we're really working through the different parts of the organization, testing, uh, obviously, um, production, maintenance, um, wind tunnel, all these kinds of applications where we try to see what can be better and we take the learnings from all other customers, so to say, from all other industries, because Formula One is a very nice cross-section of a mid-sized company doing many things that other companies do. And we saw in the video both Sir Lewis and George using augmented reality. We saw them wearing the goggles. Mm -hmm. um, how can it help not just Formula One, but your customer base more broadly as well? Yeah, I think one of the big concepts is that you have so much data available now, and everybody's talking about data in the cloud, um, and that's fantastic if you think about people that work from the office. They have access to this data. They have multiple devices. Easy. Now we're really going to the next frontier. We go to frontline workers, people that are at the forefront working with their hands, different tasks. So it can be driving, uh, obviously, to the, far, to the extreme, uh, but it can be also repairing, adjusting, um, tuning, all these activities. And we try to bring whatever data is available in the headquarter, in the back of the company, all the analytics to the front line using glasses very often, and then helping that person have the best information available or support by somebody else, and then documenting all of that, feeding that back, because what you also need to have, you need to have these very fast feedback loops. You need to have simulations. You need to have digital twins of everything, because otherwise you're just too slow. So you need to mirror the physical work, the frontline worker, with your data models that you have in the best possible way, and that's what we're trying to do. And Toto, when it comes to Formula One, can you see a future where Mercedes-AMG Patronus is, is using goggles and the engineers working with each other and glasses at the factory? Absolutely, that's the reality. Um, and the more, the more we, 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 we race remotely, the more we are capped in the, in the amount of resource that we can take to the track. Today, it's a maximum of 90 engineers and mechanics. And that number is going to be reduced because sustainability is a key topic for us. And traveling goods and uh, cargo and humans around is something that we want to continue to limit. And this technology, TeamViewer's technology, is going to enable us to do um, many things remotely in those various, in those various engineering and mechanics fields. And what is the goal? What is the ambition when it comes to sustainability? We know Formula One has big goals of being uh, carbon net zero by 2030, but Mercedes seems to have been a real um, sort of pusher in the right direction when it comes to sustainability in the paddock. So how is TeamViewer helping you with that more broadly? So before we, we talk about TeamViewer and Mercedes, I think when you, when you hear Formula One, uh, cars racing around in circles um, and five triple sevens transporting goods, it's counterintuitive to sustainability. 
Um, and I think it is our responsibility on our global <coughs> platform with more than one and a half billion viewers around the world that we can demonstrate that if we can do it, everybody else can do it. So we are, we are the first ones who are trailblazing into sustainable aviation fuel. Uh, wherever we can get sustainable aviation fuel, aviation fuel, we are utilizing it. Where we can't have it physically, it goes through the book and claim um, process. And in the same way, we are powering our trucks with 100% um, biofuel, and we've been able to reduce the emissions um, by almost 90%. And I found myself, um, when speaking to opinion leaders, chief executive officers, in presenting our case, that these people come back to their stuff and say, well, if these guys can do that, we can do it. And I think this is why it's super important that we take our responsibility um, and, and showcase that in front of our global audiences. In terms of um, the relationship with uh, TeamView, I alluded to that the more you can do remotely, the less you need to ship. Um, the more qualified your resource is a backup base, the better the surgery and the operations on the field are. So it's not only the sustainability target, which is number one priority, I guess, for all of us, but it's also a performance advantage. Because if I can use 10 of my best engineers back in Oxford, where our factory is, rather than just one guy that I can take at the f on the field, this is about performance. This is about beating our competitors. And so I'm super happy when we met, Oliver and I were on the same ba um, wavelengths, basically in our first um, telephone conference, because it's not a marketing corporation per se. The, 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 the branding comes on top as the icing on the cake. But what is really important that we are showcase for Oliver and team viewer and what our technology can do um, in the pinnacle of, uh, of sports and on the same time for us uh, gaining an advantage. And of course, this is just Formula One that we're talking about, Oliver, but this, I'm sure, is relevant for society at large and for the broader economy. So I wondered if you had any numbers in terms of what TeamViewer has been able to achieve uh, removing, well, trying to tackle carbon emissions um, on a global scale. And I imagine with billions of installations, those numbers are going to be fairly remarkable. Yeah, it's, it is very remarkable, and I'll come to the number. I think the interesting piece is it needs to, to, to Toto's point, it needs to settle in a little bit or sink in when you think about sustainability. Also for us, when we entered the partnership, actually, internally in the organization, you get many question marks. Why would you, we as TeamViewer, young company, providing software for remote, very sustainable, also us internally, of course, with best sustainability ratings, why would we partner uh, with Formula One? Um, and we also did a partnership with, with Formula E in parallel to see what the differences are. And if you think about it a bit longer, it's exactly this case. You have to go and think through the difficult business processes. It's relatively easy to set something up which is very sustainable if you put it on the site in a almost like a microcosm. Uh, but if you take your normal business operations, everything you do, if you do chemicals, med tech, manufacturing, production, this is difficult because there's frontline workers and people are traveling and there's logistics involved. So you have to push your thinking. And then obviously we know that we have customers across many industries. We, so we have very small companies that started very early on to do everything remotely. And that kind of is a trend that's going through the organization. And then we wanted to know how much is it. Uh, and it's actually already, I think last year or so, it's 37 megatons of carbon which are saved uh, due to use of remote first. So you take the principle of I do it remotely, I don't travel, and that's not during COVID times. Uh, that was already um, kind of before and after. So 37 megatons, to give you an idea, that's, uh, I think it's an A380 flying New York, Singapore 7,000 times. And for those who are more in cars, actually in traditional <laughs> cars, I think it's 11, it's 11 million cars a year. And that's TeamViewer. So TeamViewer is not a massively sizable company, uh, but if we are winning more customers and the whole concept of remote first is adopted, it's a huge value add. It's a huge value add uh, to get um, sustainability up in, in companies. Wow, and this is right at the beginning. I feel the, the future it, yes, is going to get even yeah, bigger. And it's coming more and more. I think also to the augmented reality piece, the glasses, it all looks still a bit fancy, very immersive, and there's use cases where it works well and use cases where it's just too advanced still. 
but it's coming. You can clearly see it's coming. People talk about it adopting. It's, it creates interest, and people want to try it out and then deploy it in real life day-to-day -day processes. And I'm sure other teams up and down the paddock are wishing they were partnering with someone like TeamViewer, Toto. <laughs> well, I guess so, because uh, uh, in that case, it's so advantageous to utilize the technology. And obviously, you know, we're in an, we an exclusive marriage. <laughs> Which sounds pretty healthy. I think my wife is in the audience, uh, so <laughs> I meant it uh, <laughs> from a professional standpoint. <laughs> yeah, so good. You can clear <laughs> things up later on. Um, let's look ahead then to 2023. Two races left this season, but you're already focusing on next season through, through running uh, on track in, in Brazil and Abu Dhabi, I imagine. Yes, absolutely. So there's uh, two races left, uh, one in Sao Paulo in a week's time and one in Abu Dhabi. Uh, it's testing for us. Um, we are very limited in the, in the possibilities of running the cars and uh, being out there going through a race weekend with all the practice sessions, with qualifying and with the race uh, is immense important for us to uh, clarify for us whether, we've on the, whether we're on the right track for next year, whether the problems are more or less uh, solved, hopefully, and uh, allows us to perform. And um, if not, well, we have to dig deeper. Uh, and analyze more, but in any case, very important for us. And for you, Oliver, what are the expectations for the partnership and for being involved in Formula One next year and, and into the future? So it's interesting times, obviously. Uh, I think, as we just said, so our goal is to kind of embed our technology even more, find more potential, find optimization potential. And that's obviously from as a technology provider, also together with many other providers uh, in, in the technology area. It's very hard to do that kind of these fundamental changes to do this during the season. I mean, obviously, there is every week, every second week, every third week, there is a race. Uh, this is day-to-day -day operation, so it has to work. It just has to work, and you cannot experiment a lot. Now, I think, when we go into, the, uh, into winter and then between the seasons, there is more opportunity, like last year, to go to one new use cases, see different situations, try to optimize, and then see what can be part of the standard process uh, maybe next year. And so that's uh, a very interesting phase that we're entering now. Uh, as you can imagine, teams, engineering teams are always excited. Uh, there's always 100 things to do in a company like TeamViewer, but if you call them up and say, well, there is the idea to do something with the Formula One team here, people get excited very quickly. Uh, so that's coming now. Yes, I can imagine. And, and I bet you have to tell them, no, you can't go to the race. You have to do it remotely. Yes, yeah. somehow <laughs> it's, uh, it's actually quite interesting uh, that you have to find the right balance also. Um, in our own operations, um, visit customers. You have to visit customers but you also want to do it efficiently. So it's a good mix and a good challenge. Well, how exciting. I think we're all excited for 2023. I'm wishing you both lots of luck with the partnership uh, as it continues to go from strength to strength and, and hopefully some success coming away in the next few races. Thank you very much, Toto and Oliver. Thank, thank you very you much. Thank you very much.